All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I wanted to provide a video answer key to worksheet number four. I'm gonna start by putting my name on this. And so this is a mixed practice for all different ionic compounds. So I'm hoping if I go through it and you check or go along with yours, you could see whether you're thinking on getting the answers to the formulas or names of the compounds are similar or different than mine. All right, so in the first one, I have Na plus and Br minus. If I do the crisscross method, I'm going to need one of each. And this is not a transition metal. This is going to be named sodium. And then Br, the ending of it is bromine. is going to be bromide. Next one, I have Cu plus and SO4 2 minus. If I do the crisscross method, I'm going to need two Cu's and one SO4. So it's going to look like that. And then copper is a transition metal, and so it needs a Roman numeral for its charge. Its charge is positive 1. SO4 is a polyatomic ion. It's sulfate. So overall, this name is going to be copper, Roman numeral 1, sulfate. And again, I know I'm saying crisscross method, but remember that the sum of the charges on the left side have to equal but opposite in sign the sum of the charges on the right side. So Na was plus 1, Br was minus 1, plus 1 minus 1 is 0, plus 1 plus minus 1 equals 0. Um, Cu is plus 1, sulfate, SO4 is 2 minus. There's two Cu's, so plus 1 and plus 1, plus minus 2. That equals zero. So from now on, when I say the crisscross method, I'm talking about the sum of the charges of all of the ions needs to add up to zero. Now I'm going to do the next one, Pb2 plus and Cl minus. If I do the crisscross method, I'm going to need two Cls, one Pb. Pb is a transition metal that needs a Roman numeral. Its charge is plus two. So lead is Pb, Roman numeral two. Chlorine, you name as chloride. Next one, K plus and S2 minus. If I do the crisscross method, I'll need two Ks, one S. K is not a transition metal. This just becomes potassium sulfide. Next one, SN, which is tin, and F minus, SN2 plus, and F minus one. If I do the crisscross method, I'm going to need two Fs for one SN. SN is going to need a Roman numeral. It's a transition metal. Its charge is 2, so it's going to be tin, Roman numeral 2, fluoride. Now, next one, working a bit backwards, we have BA and I, BAI2. BA is barium. Its symbol in charge is BA with a 2 plus. I, symbol in charge is I minus. This is not containing, this is not a compound that contains a transition metal, so this is just going to be barium iodide. Next, I got AlCl3. Al is aluminum. It's got a 3 plus charge. Cl is chloride, minus charge. Aluminum chloride, then. Aluminum is not a, Roman, uh, uh, not a transition metal that requires a Roman numeral. So it's going to be aluminum chloride. Next one, we have Sr and NO3. Sr is strontium. It's got a 2 plus charge. Now, I could do this off the top of my head, but you might want to use your periodic table. Mine's on the back up here. All of the charges of the group one, group two, and group three elements are there. And the group five, six, and seven, they're all there. I know them off the top of my head. It's good if you memorize them. For the transition metals in the middle, we're going to need Roman numeral or the charge given to us to figure that out or figuring out its charge from whatever compound it's bound to. All right. So we got SR is two plus. NO3 is minus one. And there's two of them. SR is not a transition metal, so it's strontium. NO3 is a polyatomic ion, nitrate. This is just strontium nitrate. Next one is KOH. It has three symbols. That means there's a polyatomic ion. I didn't mention that here or up here, but if I have three or more symbols, that must mean I have a polyatomic ion present. I have K plus and OH minus. That's going to be potassium hydroxide. Soon I'm going to stop explaining and just do it. I have two polyatomic ions here. So I have NH4 plus and SO4 2 minus. That, and I needed, if I did the crisscross method, I would need two of them. Keep in mind that for polyatomic ions, if I have more than one of them, 
I've got to put them in parentheses. And then again, I just named polyatomic ions as is, so I got ammonium sulfate done. And ammonium sulfate will always look like this. Then I got the next one, I got silver oxide. Silver is Ag plus oxide, oh, well, Ag2O, Ag plus oxide is two minus. If I do the crisscross method, sorry, ignore that. I should get Ag2O, I'm gonna need two Ags for one O. Um, and notice how there's no Roman numeral. It could appear that silver is a transition metal, but it only forms one charge. So it doesn't need a Roman numeral. Then we got lithium bromide. Li plus Br minus. If I do the crisscross method, I need one of each. LiBr. Copper 2 nitrate. Copper 2 means its charge is positive 2. Nitrate is NO3 minus 1. If I do the crisscross method, I'm going to need two nitrates for one copper. It looks similar to number 8. So I'm going to need Cu parentheses NO3 2. I need two nitrates for that one copper. Next one is manganese 2, Roman numeral 2, chloride. Manganese is Mn, and Roman numeral 2 means 2 plus, so I put that over here, Mn 2 plus. Chloride is Cl minus 1. If I want to write this formula and do the crisscross method, I'm going to need two chlorines for every one manganese. Next one, calcium carbonate. Calcium is Ca2 plus. Carbonate, another polyatomic ion, is CO3 2 minus. It looks like if I do the crisscross method, I'll get Ca2, CO3, 2. But look at their charges. The sum of them already add up to zero. Two plus and two minus is zero. So I only need one of each. Calcium carbonate is CaCO3. Next one, I have Mg2 plus and NO3 minus one. I don't know why the minus is down there. It should be up there. If I do the crisscross method, it's going to look like number 13 and it's going to look like number eight. Mg, NO3. Two. And this is Mg is not the same thing as Mn. Mg is magnesium, doesn't need a Roman numeral, not a transition metal, always positive two charge. And NO3 is nitrate, is magnesium nitrate. Now I have Cu2 plus and OH minus. If I do the crisscross me criss method, I'm going to need two OHs for every one Cu. And this is going to be copper. Copper does need a Roman numeral. Its charge is plus two. So it's going to be Roman numeral 2, hydroxide. Doesn't matter that there's two hydroxides. The Roman numeral 2 will help the Roman numeral 2 will help me figure out how many hydroxides. It's not tells me, it doesn't tell me, but it helps me figure out that in the formula. Next one is NaHCO3. A lot of symbols here. Must have a polyatomic ion. Well, we already know that Na is plus 1. HCO3 is another polyatomic ion. That's bicarbonate. If I want to name this. Sodium Na is not a transition metal, so it's just sodium bicarbonate. Next one, I have iron 3 sulfide. Iron Roman numeral 3, I mean it's Fe3 plus, and sulfide is 2 minus. Fe3 plus, S2 minus. If I do the crisscross method, I'll get Fe2, S3. And then finally on this page, we have potassium chromate. Potassium is K plus, chromate is CrO4, 2 minus. CrO4, 2 minus. Now, if you didn't know about chromate, you could look on your common ions sheet to identify its charge and symbols. And potassium, of course, is K plus, it's in group one. If I do the crisscross method, I need two potassiums for every one chromate. Okay? All right. So I'm going to say this is part one of the video. I'm not going to have a massive video. Um, so use this video to do the answer key to the front page of worksheet number four. Be on the lookout for the next two videos that has the answer keys for the rest of worksheet four and worksheet number five.